A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James and the brother of John killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the feast of the unleavened bread. He had him taken into custody and put in prison under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison, but prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter secured secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers. While outside the door, guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly, the angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains fell from his wrist. The angel said to him, Put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing that what was happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out to the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. The word of the Lord. And our response today is, the angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard and from all his distress, he saved him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. 
When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Yes, this is the feast of the two great prophets, Peter and Paul. Well, they didn't start out that great, though. They didn't start out that great at all. Peter and this gospel was called the rock. And upon this rock, I'm going to build my church. We know that at that moment, uh, Jesus was making him the first among equals of the, of the apostles, the prince of the apostles, as we call the first pope. You're, and, and this rock, this is going to be a major rock in the foundation of the church. But after that, when Jesus is needed in the most, when the chips were down for Jesus, as you know, he just collapses and denies Jesus three times. Paul. Paul, before he understood anything about Jesus, was a person who went out and, and uh, went after the Christians. He arrested them, he was putting them in jail. Some of them were going to be martyred because of what Paul did. This was Paul, that's how he started out, not so great. Yet, things changed for both of these men later on. As we know, after Jesus rose from the dead, Peter met, Jesus met Peter on the seashore and asked him three times, do you love me? Yes, I do, you know I do. Jesus healed him and forgave him for what he did and restored him, restored him back. You're still gonna be that rock, Peter, you're gonna be it no matter what you did. And everything changed for Peter because of that love of Jesus and that forgiveness at that moment. From that moment, he wasn't not turning back. Paul, as we know, was thrown off his horse. The lightning, blindness, the healing of that blindness. Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you? I'm not persecuting you, I'm persecuting all those Christians. I am Jesus who you're persecuting. If you're persecuting then you're persecuting me. Well, that did everything for, for Paul. That turns his life around immediately. He received forgiveness, and he knew now that Jesus' love on that cross was meant for him, no greater love. So both of these men were healed by Jesus' love and two major experiences of, of their life that changed everything. So my sisters and brothers, the same is true for all of us. It is Jesus' love through the power of his spirit, the spirit of Jesus, that, and his love that he pours out into us through his spirit that changes us, that changes us. No matter what we've done in the past, no matter what our path has, has been, no matter how far we strayed from the path, that healing, that forgiveness, that love of Jesus changes everything for us. And then once again, there is just no turning back. No turning back. So today, my sisters and brothers, let's, let's think about that. Are, are we in need of the same thing that happened to the two of them? Are we in need of experiencing that love of Jesus? Experiencing it. They had to experience it to change their lives. And so might we. If it happened, happened already, 
we still probably need that. So today, why don't we find a quiet place, allow Jesus to come and embrace you. You know, he's still the one who can still do that. We can't do that for each other, but he can do that. Let him come and embrace you and let him fill you with the experience of his love as he holds you, forgives you if necessary, and lets you know that you are uniquely special to him. He created you to love him and to receive his love and then to go forth. So today, maybe that's another day we have that we're challenged, if need be, to allow Jesus to transform our lives through his love. And really then, with him, there's no turning back. Without him, we turn back all the time. But with him and that love, we go forth with joy in our hearts.